Thank you for being with us through this amazing Thursday evening of girls high school basketball, some of the best basketball you'll see in the nation. On behalf of First Amendment Sports, I'm Ken Marangolo. He's Darren McClinton. Uh, it's been a great action-packed evening tonight, Ken, man. We, uh, it was a very good and exciting first game. Yes, it was. And we're expecting nothing less in this second second half of this doubleheader. I don't like to say who I think is going to win or who I don't think is going to win because I don't know who should or shouldn't be winning between St. Francis and Riverdale, especially after watching that game. Riverdale Baptist uh, with a, a gutty win over uh, St. Francis, who, who uh, featured number 10, Angel Reese, just committed to the University of Maryland. Um, it was an awesome first game. A little excitement at the end. We clear the deck. We're back for game two. Bishop McNamara High School. I'll try not to be biased. Mustangs. New Hope Academy over in Hyattsville. An incredibly gifted program. Uh, coming off a, a national championship. I mean, b b people talk about the, this, this team being one of the best, if not the best team in the nation last year. They started off the season ranked number one um, after winning the Geico National Championship over St. John's last year on ESPN. And uh, this is Sam Caldwell's third year over there at New Help. What he has built over there is extraordinary. He's got a lot of talent. He, he has girls transferring in. They play a national schedule. They play the best of the best. So this is just another one of those national powerhouse games. It just happened to be from right down the street from each other. Right <laughs> down the street. It's going to be an exciting game. We, uh, we cut our teeth at First Amendment Sports on WCAC Girls High School Basketball last year, St. John's Bishop McNamara. We got Bishop McNamara in the house again tonight uh, on, our, on our first night again uh, in 2019. Thanks for being with us. We're about a minute away from tip-off. Mustangs, Tigers, two top five teams in the nation. It's going to be very exciting. It's going to be a highly skilled. I, I, I'm not, there's no such thing as a jinx in this case. You're going to see some of the best high school girls players in the nation. Uh, just like all the other sports we cover, they know each other. They play year round against each other. They've been playing with each other since they were young kids. Uh, it, the familiarity factor between uh, these teams make, makes it even more compelling, Darren. Uh, and, and that factor, I think, gets lost on a lot of folks. You're right. At, at this level, th at this, this new age of high school girls basketball, you're going to get some of the most athletic, highly skilled young ladies that you're going to see. And a lot of them are going to Power 5 uh, colleges on full rise because of their free education, because of their talent. And, and they've been, like you said, they've been playing against each other you know, in the spring and summer, but now they get a chance to wear their school across their chest and, and, and represent their own school and their, and their, and their neighborhood. So it's, uh, it's going to be action-packed, and it's, it, I'm expecting a barn burner from beginning to end. An amazing facility here at the Family Life Center in Kettering, Maryland, not Glen Arden, although the First Baptist Church of Glen Arden uh, is, is, is our gracious host. I expect all you... Mustang fans out there to say your own prayer before tip-off. They will now be doing it on the floor like we do in Forestville and around the WCAC. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Eight minutes to go on the clock. It's a beautiful facility, isn't Mustangs it? Mustangs in black, New Hope in white, and it is a beautiful facility. It's a great night. Awesome high school basketball. This We're is interesting. Look at, look at the jump ball. Look how the New Hope is lined up on the jump Jada Walker will concede. That's like, that's that's deferring the kickoff that to Madison Scott. That is exactly what that is. Madison Scott on the outside. Leah two, King, the senior up top. Yanta Vaughn. I don't know if they got her for touching the baseline or travel. I they call see. traveling. They call travel, hmm. and that seemed to be the call of choice in the first game, first half of this doubleheader. The call your mother, Delhi, call of choice. Call of choice. We'll talk about our sponsor throughout the night. As Jada Walker brings it up for the Tigers. And there's a deep three. Elsie. I'll try that last name here soon. Madison Scott is going to find Yonta Vaughn. Jada Walker was the MVP of that national championship game last year against St. John's. She gave, she left nothing Leah 2K working her way in. It's going to be an and one as Maria Gakdang commits the foul. Strong play right there by Leah 2K. 
she is back for her senior campaign after a very stellar junior year. We people, called her name quite a bit last season. People who watch First Amendment sports saw Leah to work. The Mustangs always seemed to be just a step ahead of the competition when she was on the floor, no matter about her heralded teammates or the heralded players on the other side of any of those games. King's a factor. And she is headed up to Pittsburgh to play for the in the ACC job. next year. Leah Tu King pushing it up. It's going to be too much. And be careful. There is no room on the baseline. If you saw our first game tonight, you saw this thing. This, this place only gets more and more crowded as the game goes on. They will do their best to keep people spread out. Inbound to Madison Scott. But she's unable to get a point blank shot in. King to Vaughn. Vaughn sets up the offense. Much like the first game when Angel Reese was at the top of that press with those long arms, Madison Scott, which is another McDonald's All-American candidate, she is going to be the head of the snake, so to speak. We're going to uh, call there on Yonta Vaughn. She might have come underneath the ball there. Maddie is very active on both ends of the floor. Snia Jock guarding the inbound. Jada Walker. Jada Walker is very, very confident ball handler. Pinnock back to Walker. Walker drives, dishes it out. Fall to Roy. Excellent, for three. Excellent penetration by the first team all meta, Jada Walker. Found her teammate in the corner with her feet set. That's the easiest shot in basketball. Leah Pitts works the baseline and gives it up. New Hope driving. Jada Walker stops, pops. That's two, five, two. New Hope on top early against McNamara. As you can see early on, Jada is the orchestrator. She is the... Madison Scott from the free throw line. The chauffeur. I'm going to come up with a bunch of names for her. I think we got a tie up there. Yonta Vaughn tied up. Jada Walker, possession arrow belongs to New Hope. Inbound to Walker. A very underrated play right there on the defensive end. Not a lot of times it goes without saying, but if you can get the possession arrow change with a tie up, Pinnick for three, too much. King to Vaughn, Vaughn pushes it up. A little bit too much for Sania Ja to handle. Keep your eye on Sania Ja. She's a very, very talented and heralded freshman. Only in ninth grade, y'all. Disruptive, disruptive length on the inbounder. LZ Moda K tight. And I apologize, LZ. Ja getting on that pass. Jada penetrates. Vaughn comes up with it, pushes it up, leads Madison Scott. McNamara is looking to push. They are. A little early game jitters. A little aggressive. But you, see, you see they're making it a point to run. Yep. And it just feels like a smaller gym with this crowd, too. It's, it's uh, deceptive. Now if McNamara could turn this into a track meet, playing into their hands. Madison Scott is going to pick it up. She's ahead. Unable to make it go down. And Ja with the putback. That's good and one. Madison Scott wanted the foul for the contact there. McNamara go to the line looking to tie it up with just over five minutes to go in the first quarter. Finishes the M1. As you can see, why why McNamara is so excited about this young freshman, Ja. Alicia Pinnock for three. Madison Scott with the rebound. Deja Bristol g gave it a little something again. McNamara pushing. Ja unable to bring it down. It's going to stay. New hope. They are forcing the tempo, aren't they? They sure are. 5 5 game, five minutes to go in the first quarter. Ja with the 
with the pig. It's gonna come off the foot of Ja. New Hope ball, fresh shot clock. Ja needs a break. She is exhausted. She is playing her heart out. Taylor Gibson comes in. Another familiar face from last year for Mustang fans. It's a veteran squad McNamara has. Kennedy falling to Roy. Giving it up, getting it back, giving it up, getting it back. Leah Pitts to Madison Scott. Left side, 7-5, McNamara. Kennedy falling to Roy. Looking to bring it under control. A lot of cross-court passes. Jada Walker from deep. Madison Scott brings it down. Leah Tu King controls it. It's going to be a foul on Aaliyah Pitts. Nightmare playing just a little bit out of control. Yeah, as you can offense. see, they're, they're off to the races. They, they've turned the ball a few over a few times, you know, pushing the tempo. If they can convert some of these break, fast breaks they have, they'll be in business. I think depth is going to be a key for both of these teams. If they keep playing at this place, these girls are going to get tired. Fall to Roy for three. New Hope takes the lead, 8-7. They're going to call that all night because they have been calling it all night. They get Vaughn for the second time, get underneath that ball. Another one of those what I call unforced turnovers. Yep. Cousins driving around the corner. Nice. Bristol. Deja Bristol with the two. Deja is headed to UVA next year with a nice finish. Inside to Gibson who fit almost finishes. Deja is the son of Former Maryland Terp and high point star Wayne Bristol. Yanta Vaughn unable to make it count. Kennedy Fountilroy taking it back up for New Hope. She's going to put it up from deep. Deja wearing number 31 like her dad. Gia Cook will inbound the ball to Yanta Vaughn. Gia Cook, the very talented transfer. She came over from Seton. The Roadrunners. WCAC. Leah Two King to Taylor Gibson. Back to King. Madison Scott underneath. Easy bucket, good pass. One that point was game. a nice draw and dish right there. I think they have an issue with the shot clock. I think they got it under control. 25 on the shot clock. Delisha Pinnock slowing things down for New Hope. Madison Scott on the coverage. Pinnock for three. Cannot leave her open. That's two for two out there from deep. New Hope up by four. Taylor Gibson under pressure. Going back the other way, Fonteroy finds Porter. I'll tell you what. Off the bank for Cousins, I believe. Did she call glass on that? I think. Well, she made McNamara call timeout is what she did. she did. 
Speaking of making calls, I want to say thank you to the Call Your Mother Deli for bringing with us tonight. From the Family Life Center and the She, on behalf of the She Got Game folks, the Super Games here. Yes, DMV Super Games. This is the first year of this event, and I, I got to tell you, it's exciting. It's an electric environment. You know, I, want, I want to know about their sides, Darren. I want to know about the Call Your Mother sides. I'm a big sides guy. I know they knock, knock the sandwiches out of the park. I know they do. Because they do. I, they I got do. chips. They have, they have sweets, which is my weakness. Yeah, of course. I got a nice. Fresh made. White chocolate chip cookie, mm -hmm. and they've got all your they got all your <laughs> drinks and beverages too. I, uh, I, I, I mean, I had a good time. Oh, they got some macaroni, and some uh, pasta, maybe some pasta salad. I'm just saying. I had tunnel vision when I went down yeah, there, I got you. but they they have everything you need. You got to go check it out. We're trying to get some mouths to w start watering and make that call. And call your mother. I mean, on Saturdays and Sundays, you can't. The line is around the corner and down the block. Jay Hayes, Hope Evans in the backcourt for the Mustangs. Hope Evans across the timeline. She's a ball of energy. Inside, unable to connect, Pitts was. Hope Evans is headed to Coppin State. And that's on Tiger a full travel. Ride. Hope Evans will run with anybody in the WCAC, that's for sure. Yes, she will. You remember the defensive performance she put on last year in the playoffs? Fonteroy out on Hope. And they're going to get Hope Evans for a travel. We were kidding. That was. They are going to call it. The memo. There was a memo. It's like office space. <laughs> Did you get the memo? They're putting covers on it. Look at the pressure. Kennedy Fontoroy applies. Lord Porter able to bring it down. Another travel call. Putting covers on all TBS reports, Darren. Making sure you got the memo. Shea Hayes back to Hope Evans. Out in the corner to Ja, who penetrates. Nice looking dart inside to the, to, to the basket. That is that freshman we've been talking about. And the freshman commits the foul on Tara Cousins, who made a strong play to the hoop. Five point lead for the Tigers. Look at this drive to the basket. How does she squeeze through there? Only in ninth grade. Yeah. Cousins with the first one. Second one comes out here, and here comes McNamara. Hayes, Evans, Cook out on the top. Jow on the baseline, once again, penetrating all the way to the hole and unable to get the two. Everything but the points. New Hope inside with Gakdang. They're not able to connect. Jada Hope Evans. Gia Cook drives inside, picks up a charge. One referee called a block, one called a charge. Which one are they going to go with? Offensive foul. Offensive foul. That's why for games like this, you have a three-man referee crew. <laughs> They'll get it right. Hope Evans is going to make it hard for anybody to bring that ball down. Jada Walker make, going a long way. Extend, uh, Jada looked like she extended her arm. They called her on that offensive foul at the very end. And now the referee is just going to touch base to make sure they saw it the same way. They are picking up 94 feet. The initial call was on 11. I, I think that's what the call that's going to stand, and I do think she extended her arm as she went inside. 
Hope Evans bringing it back up for the Mustangs. Down six with 30 seconds to go in the first quarter. Inside of the freshman, Ja, driving. New Hope wants to travel, and they're gonna get it. That is the call of the evening. <laughs> what a good looking drive. People are gonna start cheering the travel call at some point. They're gonna keep calling it until they do. But yeah, no, Ja made a very great move inside, and, and a finish. Shot clock is down again. Referee's gonna stop play. Eighteen and a half seconds to go here in the first quarter. New Hope with the ball. Jada Walker with the ball. Hope Evans defending. Jada gets inside but just unable to finish it. Job for three, off the rim. Two seconds left. Good if it goes from Jada. And that's your first quarter, Darren. 17-11, New Hope with the lead. McNamara out on top early, running early. To call your mother, the Jewish Deli. First quarter highlights coming up. The McNamara is pushing the tempo. They're winning the possession game. I think they've had more possessions. They just need to convert on some of those. And this game would be much closer. Leah Two King early in the in the first quarter. Madison Scott. Excited about her down in Forestville. Madison Scott, when you let her get that ball close to the basket, she's gonna finish every time. Haven't heard much from Leah Two King. I'm expecting a, a big second quarter and second half from her. She's kind of the rock of that team over there. What a shout out to all the Bishop McNamara folks who are on campus tonight for the groundbreaking of the new, I believe it's the Lorraine uh, Science and Technology Center, the groundbreaking. Dr. Marco Clark and all the faculty, administration, and the board. All those fine men and women putting together one heck of a facility that we cannot wait to get over to. My mom, by the way, proud of the rain alum. Yeah. We'll be over there soon enough. We got an exciting basketball season lineup. Second quarter about to get underway sports. with New Hope after deferring the tip and setting the stage for the rest of the possessions. I don't think I've ever seen that before. I, I remember when Shaq, a couple times they did it for Shaq. <laughs> LZ to Jada. Ja on Jada. Drive. Gacting. And one. That Maria. That was textbook right there. You yeah. get the offensive rebound, you keep it high, don't bring it down to the de defense, and go right back up for the M1. And Maria gives New Hope a nine point lead here early in the second quarter. As King sets up on top, Aaliyah Pitts. Baseline from Vaughn. King unable to get it before it bounces off the back, back of the backboard. They're making a conscious effort, I, I see. That was probably talked about during that quarter break to get the ball to Leah to King so she can exert herself. Jada Walker working hard. Delisha Pinnock. Gets the pick from Bristol over to Walker. Blocked by Madison Scott. Gia Cook ahead. And she's going to be fouled by Pinnock. She'll go to the line for two. It's a burst of speed by Gia. 
as Jada Walker fighting to get inside Madison Scott denial. Maddie Scott makes it tough for you to drive in there. She is a rim protector. Cook with the first. Hope Evans checks in for Yonta Vaughn. McNamara is really going to put pressure on new host ball handler, especially Jada Walker. I remember in the national championship game last year after they beat St. John's and she got the MVP, she was so exhausted. It was hard for her to uh, do the interview. She leaves it all on the floor. Madsen's yes, got Hope does. Evans. Making, making Harford, her work. Vance, Look at that. Yeah. Maria unable to get it. King back the other way. She had Pitts on the far wing. Hope Evans with the reset. Madison Scott, from just, just beyond the elbow. King with a great rebound. Inside to Scott again. Using the glass, and one for the Mustangs. Six and a half minutes to go in the half. Five point game, Scott hits the line. Throughout her career, she's made a living in that mid range. That first one, I don't want to say that was out of her range, but I know she feels more comfortable in that second shot in that area where she got it. Absolutely. She's got a soft touch. Unable to make her free throw. Ball loose. New Hope ball. And New Hope gets the timeout. Pinnock gains possession. Coach Caldwell using using his timeouts wisely. One that one seemed like they were in a little bit of uh, trouble, but it's also to get Jada Walker a little bit of a break. She is spending all of her energy in that backcourt. There are two things that that can happen with that. You can get her tired, and you can also make somebody else make a decision, get the ball out of her hands. It seems like McNamara is making a conscious effort of doing that. Yeah, and McNamara's uh, Coach Oliver changing up the kind of the chemistry here with having Hope Evans in with Matt Scott and uh, Leah too. I think only Yonta Vaughn was really playing guard when they were on the floor for the most part in the first quarter. A little wet spot on the floor. They'll towel that down. Six and a half minutes to go in the half. Five point lead for the Lady Tigers from Hyattsville. Did you see Juwan Howard wipe the floor the other day at a Michigan game? He's great. <laughs> he is great. Yes, he is. Got a stand ovation for that, too. Rick nice acting speed. underneath. Leah, too, with the block, and then she pulls it back. Hope Evans pushing it to Pitts. Off to the race. It's inside. Madison Scott draws the foul. I don't know if they're gonna get Elsie or Maria on that. That's gonna go on Elsie, Moda K tight. My apologies again on the pronunciation if I got it wrong. I'll tell you what, I'm as we see Maddie at the free throw line, I'm impressed with Mac the way McNamara changes ends of the floor, whether it's a turnover or a rebound. They're getting from one end to the other in a hurry. You gotta concentrate on your transition defense playing. The Mustangs. Caden Samuels checks in for the Mustangs. Hope Evans denies Jada Walker the ball in the inbounds. Pinnick bringing it up for the Tigers. Gia Cook on her. Switching to Madison Scott. Pinnick drives and one. Strong drive right there by Delisha Pinnick, the senior. And she's hit two from deep. That time she took it to her strong side. I don't think you'll see Leah to get beaten to a spot like that more than once or twice all season. Just a little bit slow to fill in there at the end. It's over there talking about it with the coach. Pinnock with the N1, six minutes to go, six minute lead for the Tigers. Like I said before, veteran players like that, it's not much you need to say to them. They know what they yep. did. Their bar is already set high. 
to settle down and make plays. Madison Scott on the drive, dish inside. That's gonna be a tie up. Possession arrow belongs to McNamara. As Caden Samuels got involved in that. Gia Cook the inbound. Gia Cook gets inside. And it looks like Deja Bristol able to draw the charge for the Tigers. Looks like Gia got a little bit ahead of herself on that one, going a little too fast against that zone. Ball to Royal on the drive. Inside dish to Bristol, but the foul happened before the pass. I'm impressed by the, the sophomore, Kennedy Fauntleroy. Looks sharp early. Seems to have that ball on the string. Look at the well-dressed co Coach Caldwell over there. Sharpest man in the building. I feel way underdressed. Just looking at him, I feel like they should throw me out. The sophomore knocks down the first free throw. Lee Tzu King back in. Caden Samuels back to the bench. Lee Tzu with a chance to take a blow, think about it, make her adjustments in her head. Scott with the rebound. On the Cook pushing it. Madison Scott driving inside to Leah too. Look at that. Unable to get it. Second try. Unable to get it. Third try for Madison Scott. She'll draw the foul. McNamara three shots inside one foot there. You can see the height advantage of McNamara right now. It seems like there are four guards around Miss Bristol. With Gak Dang and Moda K tight out. McNamara. Able to operate. Try to implement their will on the boards on both ends. King, Gibson, and Scott certainly should hold that advantage, although we didn't see that with Riverdale. Paris McBride dominated inside. She was probably the smallest girl on the court. Here comes Kenny Falteroy. Tara Cousins. To Deja Bristol's feet, ball's on the ground. That's gonna be a tie up as well, and I believe we're gonna go New Hope way. Should change the arrow here. I hate to see loose balls like that when, when girls are diving around on, at their legs, but that shows some athleticism to be able to avoid injury like that. And that's, my friends. The call of the evening. A travel. So call when, your mother, call of the Were they calling that a foul or a, or a tie-up? Because the, they kept the possession arrow with New Hope there. Maybe they caught a loose ball foul that I didn't, I didn't see. Hope Evans bringing it up for McNamara. Gia Cook on the drive. Wanted to hand it off there, I believe, to Taylor Gibson. Miscommunication there. Five-point game, five minutes to go in the half. I'll tell you what, Gia is fast. Cousins with the pick. Pinnick brings it out. Fall to Roy from the baseline. Madison Scott with the rebound. Smooth by Gia Cook. Leah two, baseline in. And Deja Bristol draws another charge. Great defense by Deja. That's a lesson, Darren. Get to the spot first, you get that call. Absolutely. If you see the adjustment that Coach Caldwell has made, now Jada Walker is not bringing the ball up every time she can rest a little bit, play off the ball, and conserve some of that energy. And Fultz Royal and Pinnock are doing a fine job. Laura Porter. Inside to Bristol. 
That's a tie up. The referees are pointing McNamara's way. They must be keeping the arrow themselves. McNamara's doing a good job of digging in the post. New Hope is playing one post player, so it's easy to double. Madison Scott, the king up top. Taylor Gibson fighting down low. There's the drive by Gia Cook. And they'll call that off her feet, which I believe is a good call. She lost the handle. Laura Porter to inbound for the Tigers. The freshman Giles back in the game. Pinnick for three. And the ball hits the shot clock. That will not count. Three and a half minutes to go. McNamara with the ball, down five. Madison Scott inbound into Hope Evans. And here come the Mustangs. Another low scoring affair. Yep. Especially in the first half. Two teams that like to get out and run. Hope Evans. King on the drive. Stops, pops. Mrs. Iron, Jada Walker. I'm going to say they called her stepping on the line. Madison Scott will inbound. Leah Two King with the baseline drive, kicks it out to Jaw, who gets inside. Working for her own rebound. Falteroy able to bring it up. Porter with the shot. Jada Walker. A lot of contact, no call. Porter puts it up, back in. New Hope up seven. Referees letting them play a little bit. Hope Evans on the drive. Three point attempt by Taylor Gibson was too strong. Called off the ball. A couple of questionable quick shots for McNamara the last couple of trips down the court. You don't want to dig yourself into deep, too deep of a hole. And there is no room on these sidelines. <laughs> I'm sure Coach Oliver is preaching to his team, let's get some good possessions before the half. Jada Walker gets a much needed breather. As does Leah too. Inbound to Fauntleroy. Again, off the ball. The referees are getting their money's worth tonight. They sure are. Well, they got some overtime. First game went long. Second tip was about 45 minutes late as they check into the scores table. I don't actually think of, it was a foul. I'm wondering if it's still another it issue with the clock. Issue. Yeah. I think they reset the shot clock when they should not have. But we'll get a confirmation on that. It's a good time for both coaches and teams to talk it over without being assigned a timeout. With 2.30 left, Ken, it, it, this is a crucial part of the game. A lot of basketball games are, 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 it's a game of runs. And the very important run is the last three to four minutes of a half how you can set the table and set the tone and go into the locker room at halftime is really important. So I know both coaches are concentrating on what they're gonna do, what their teams are gonna do in this last two and a half minutes. That's a good shot of you, Darren. Get my good side? Always. Fontero on the drive. We got another 
whistle. Carry. Uh, I believe it was a carry. Not the way like you used to get carried all the time, <laughs> Darren. It's a different kind of carry. Not like I carry you on Tuesdays. You get carried in the basement. <laughs> Hope Evans carrying it in for Mustangs. Madison Scott knocked away, but the ball finds its way back to Hope Evans. Ja on the drive, long arms too much. Underneath, McNamara Mustangs, another offensive rebound. This should stay Mustang ball and it will. It's Taylor Gibson un unable Ken, watch to this get back base, up. Watch yeah. this baseline out of bounds play that McNamara runs where they have a post player diving right down the middle. The last couple of times they've had a wide open player. And they didn't take it. And missed him, missed her. Look at that. Right there, Ja. She saw her that time. Yep. Ja gets, again, does 98% of the work to get the two, unable to put it in. Still a very impressive player, like, like we were talking about at the top of the game. Yeah, she won't be denied getting to the basket. Jada Walker pushing for Fresh New legs Hope. back in the game. Ja, steal from Pinnock, and she'll draw a foul. I believe they're going to call that against Pinnock. And the bonus. And I'm the bonus. impressed with Ja on both ends of the floor. She's active. We call that uh, radius of disruption. She has a she, she's very disruptive, and she can she can be doing it from a, a foot and a half away. As she poked that ball out, misses the front side of that. And ball stay Mustangs. And remember, she's just a freshman. Magnamer has a, a, a lot of length on the floor right now. Let's see if Maddie can get the big diving. Ah, oh, they've made the adjustment. They've shut that off. Hits to Evans. They're going to get a travel call. The call of the night. I want. I want it. Like, there's got to be. How a, many times are we gonna say that? A Ken? bet. I don't know, but someone. I hope someone's. The call like a, your mother. Call of the night. I got maybe like a charity gets a donation every time someone makes like a travel call. I hope. I hope our our viewers are all donating like a dollar to their favorite cause every time that whistle blows. Gia Cook on Fontenroy. Fontenroy able to get all the way in. Maria Gakdang puts it back up and in. Nine point lead, minute and a half to go in the first half. Mustangs down to the New Hope Tigers. Ja for three. They battling down there on the boards. Taylor Gibson fighting for the rebound. I want to say she drew the foul, and she did. Looks like, look like they got Flo, Flo Venerte. You know what I'm going to do, Ken? What do you got? While we're watching the free throw, I'm going to call my guy down and call your mother, Deli. Yeah. And I'm going to have him give anybody that's watching this broadcast. Yep. The call your mother, Deli, call of the night is traveling. If you go down there and you mention First Amendment sports and Darren McClinton and you say the call of the night is traveling, I'm going to give him to give you a discount on your bill. Absolutely. They, well, they better. I and mean, we got to figure out what sandwich. Not a turkey club either. <laughs> With avocado. It's a filet. Cousins drive, stops, puts it up. A little too strong. Ja with the rebound. She's pushing. She sees pitch. Nice look ahead. Two for the Mustangs. Makes it an eight-point game. 45 seconds to go in the half. I tell you, Ja is an impressive freshman. Impressive. Down low for Maria Taylor Gibson, Dean her up. Pinnock, too strong. Gibson on Maria, and they will call that on the backside and and one for Gakdang of the New Hope Tigers. They're up eight. Maria and one Gakdang. That's her second or third one of the of the first half. Yeah, Taylor Gibson caught. Wrong-footed, unable to challenge for that rebound. 
Maria too strong, able to put it right back up. She's got a nice looking stroke from the free throw line as well. Leads back to nine for the Tigers with 30 seconds to go in the half. The Roadrunner transfer bringing it up for the Mustangs. Madison Scott. Ja into Gibson. Great hands, draws the call. It's been a couple times. She seems very sure handed, uh, you know, down low. Yeah. I like to see the Mustangs try for that a little bit more. That was a good call by Coach Oliver. It sure was. When Maria checked out of the game for the half, they spread the court, and New Hope only has one post player in there. So they wanted to isolate one of the guards down in there. And they got what they wanted. Taylor Gibson makes one out of two. Eight point game, 12 seconds to go. Cousins with the ball for New Hope. Up the middle, off the glass again. Deja Bristol over the back. 3.9 seconds to go. And McNamara will be at the line. Clock I going to be Madison right Scott. There. If I was New Hope, I would have taken the last shot of the half. When you shoot too early, these kind of things can happen. It'll be a nice little swing if Madison's able to make these free throws for the Mustangs to close out the half. See, now you're giving, you're giving McNamara a chance to score points without the clock moving go into halftime feeling better about themselves. Yep. Madison makes them both, six point game. Just over three seconds. Gia Cooks with the save, she puts it up. A little bit too strong. A lot of effort and hustle in the corner. Now Ken, that was, that was a very important exchange just on the mentality of both teams going into the halftime. Instead of being up nine, Eight or nine, now you're only up six, and then Gia Cook was able to get a steal right there. So they've got McNamara's got to go into halftime feeling pretty good about themselves. They, they can get themselves back into the game. Thanks again to the Call Your Mother Deli, bringing us our second quarter highlights. The rebound by Maria. The first and one we saw her get in the second quarter. There was another one. Nice. She had about two or three of them in the first half. In the second half, it'd be interesting to see if, if, if New Hope lives inside or if their outside shooting heats up because one thing I know about them, they can they can hit, they can they can make the scoreboard ring. Yes, they can. There's McNamara on the run. Nice little run by Pitts. Gets behind the defense. If you, if you can get McNamara in a up and down pace, you're in trouble. But New Hope's done a good job of the, in their defensive transition, getting back and stopping some of those uh, runouts. But um, I think the second half, McNamara's going to try to push the tempo a little bit. But New Hope, if they're if they're smart, they keep it a half court possession by possession game and try to grind it out and protect this six point lead. What, uh, we're talking to Ron James in the first half of uh, the Riverdale St. Francis game, talking to us about team takeover. There's a lot of those players represented in, in the second game of the night too. Yeah, t um, he said that seven of his 11 players are represented in, uh, in all the games tonight, so you know, TakeOver, they, they had a clean sweep this spring and summer. They won every event. They won the national championship, um, AAU championship in the EYBL. It's a very, very tough league. That's why you see so much skill out here. These girls are playing all year round. They're playing high, high-level AAU basketball. The atmospheres are, are they're, they're not scared of anything because they've seen it. You know, people hanging all over the court. And, you know, 
it's just a testament of, of, the, of the level of play and the skill these girls have at an early age. As we say, as we say our goodbyes to Mr. Mark Tillman, who's, who was courtside. The Gonzaga great, and Georgetown great guard. And we've got, we've got Mr. Ron James back. He's coming back. Let's put him back on. Let's talk a little bit. A little bit about what he's seeing. Ron, welcome back. Second half of the second game of the night. Glad to see you survived. <laughs> now, Ron, I was expecting a, a, a more more of a track meet kind of kind of game between McNamara and New Hope because I know both teams like to push it, and both teams have talented guards that can push the tempo. Seems to be a, a low scoring game. Uh, I don't. I wouldn't call it because of lack of possessions. Maybe lack of conversions. Right, I know I would agree, and you know, we got, I think both teams need to take care of the ball a little bit. I was expecting and hoping for a faster paced game, so we'll see what the second half can bring in. For the amount of travel calls we saw, the amount of contact that they didn't call, it was, it, it, it was almost like it stood out, you know, right. the, the, where the whistle was swallowed and where it wasn't. Right. Um, but I will give it to them, the referees have been consistent yes. from the beginning of the first game through the first half of the second game. Was, was a travel for Riverdale St. Francis in the first minutes of that game is still a travel. Oh, yeah. A carry, a double dribble, they're getting it all. Uh, it's 101 tonight here at, uh, at the Family Life Center. Yeah, you can't fault them on their consistency. No. They are definitely making that call, and uh, players got to make an adjustment. Right. That, that, that's the key point. They do have to make an adjustment because these girls are very, very quick. They're explosive. And if, if they see in the beginning of the game that the referee is going to make those calls, you have to adjust and put the ball down first. And these girls are good enough to do that, so uh, we, maybe we won't see as many calls in the second half. Right. Well, let's, let's, give, uh, let's t ask Ron what we'd like to do on all of our broadcasts. I'm going to have you finish this sentence, Ron. Bishop McNamara wins this game if. What has to happen in the second half for them to win? If they increase their tempo and attack the basket. Okay. New Hope wins if. They continue to attack the basket as they are and are spacing out the floor. So everything, for the winner of this game is going is going to uh, end up with a with a much better second half uh, second half in the paint. Is basically what you're saying. Yeah, I think so. And you know, in the paint, you know, a lot of things happen there, and they get to the foul line more often, and they're pretty decent foul uh, free throw shooters, both teams. Yeah, we saw. We've, we've it's uh, it's amazing how hard these athletes work to get the ball to one foot out. And then how hard it is <laughs> to get the ball in from one foot out, and you know right. it looks so easy. Everyone, wants, you know, when you get you, you work so hard to get the ball down low, uh, and you're unable to come away with two. Um, in the in the first game, well, we saw St. Francis struggle with that a lot, right. and it ended up being really the difference in the game. I think McNamara has probably struggled the most with that this time. Although I will say they've been getting a lot of second chances after yes. missing that one foot shot. Yes, get second chances and getting on the boards, you know, um, and understanding that. You know, offensive boards are very valuable in games like this, especially I think in both games you have the neighborhood battles, I call them, because the kids are very familiar with one another. Um, and, you know, you got you to gotta bring out, you know, something special in that basket you got. Yeah, I, I think the offensive putbacks are uh, uh, evidence of the activity. A lot of these girls are very, very active. They have a nose for the ball. So you're going to see a lot of offensive rebounds. You're going to see a lot of, uh, of, of contact in there because and, and like you said the neighborhood battles they they know each other they tweet each other they're on instagram and they you know right. talking a little noise and they want to represent so you know you're going to see some you're going to see some physical play out there right yeah no nothing wrong with a little bit of physicality uh, in the game man, it's, you it's don't want to give up that 50 50 ball no to 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 your opponent let's keep the physicality though in the game and not after the game <laughs> absolutely absolutely we, we, we shake hands and that's you, right uh, you that win humbly right. and you win gracefully that's right uh, so these these coaches also wanted to make sure we, we shout them out um, coach Caldwell coach Oliver just uh, leading two amazing programs and that that's really when, when we talk about uh, we, we cover these high school teams in the DC um, you know, Maryland Virginia area specifically the WCAC but much wider and broader than that we're so um, fortunate and, and uh, honored to be able to cover these other teams uh, on a night like tonight. But they're programs now. This isn't yeah. uh, everyone show up for practice a couple weeks before a season and go. Um, it's year-round, uh, and it's impressive. Yeah, no, it definitely is. And, you know, I've always been a big proponent of, you know, when you can have high school programs 
um, linking themselves up and supporting the travel club season and vice versa, you know, you get that full circle effect and ultimately the players and the athletes are the, the beneficiaries of it. Yep. Um, and, you know, it's, it's needed more, I think, and particularly in our area. And I know this is kind of a conversation that happens throughout the country, oh, across yeah. the country. Um, but, you know, we always try to put our, our best foot forward in establishing those relationships so we can help the kids get better for high school season and high school coaches help the kids get better for travel season. Yeah, and Ken, it's a testament to, to the area, the amount of, of, of skill and talent in the DMV area yep. because, uh, like Ron said before, you have Angel Reese playing for his EYBL team, the national championship team, and she brings her teammate, um, uh, Gordine, yes. Anaya Gordine, over and to, to join her on that team. So there's so much talent in this area, and when the, when the travel clubs and the high school programs can work together, it's a win-win for everybody. And it gets, gets to show the rest of the country how good we are here in, in, in the D.C. area. Well, and, and so many sports now, uh, we, the one team or the other dominates. You know, uh, you either, and, and in some cases, it's either or. And it's just awesome that that's not happening here. It's clear that the best players are playing for their high schools. Yeah. In girls' high school basketball, I think it's the same in boys' high school basketball. Obviously, football. Obviously, I, I still think lacrosse. Uh, some of these sports that we cover, um, that's something that we, you know, we, whenever we talk to coaches, I, either the travel team coaches or the high school coaches, it's something that gets lamented. It's not just the specialization. Right. It's not just the single sport year round for years and years and years from these athletes. It's which team do I play for? Right. Thankfully right. for us, we get to watch them play in that maroon and gold, which you know I love, Ron. <laughs> but I, I got nothing but re right. mad respect for the Lady Tigers from Hyattsville as well. You know, they're probably the team I like better from Hyattsville. There's another team in Hyattsville I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of. I know my man Tim Stracken is watching today. Gotcha. <laughs> That's all right. I love them stags, too. We're going to get ready to get started here in uh, the second half. I want to say thanks once again to Ron James. Appreciate right. you. Come over to the basement, all right. man. All right, thank yeah. you. I'll need to get over. All right. I'm We're going to have you in. Let yeah. me know. I'll Come be on. over. I'll be over. I thanks just, for having me, guys. You got it, man. All right. Take care. Great job, Ron. Yep. Ron James does a great job with TTO girls. He, the, the record speaks for itself. And these young ladies, I'll tell you, an uh, interesting fact, um, Riverdale's coach, uh, Coach Bozeman, told me that the team GPA is 3.75. That's awesome. That is awesome. And these girls are doing it on the court, off the court, in the classroom, and going to college for free. That's what it's all about. New Hope, the first possession of the second half. Jada Walker to Pinnock. Pinnock inside of Maria. She's at the free throw line. Back outside to Pinnock. Very methodical out of the gate for the Tigers. Good defense by Gia Cook. That's going to draw a travel. You just got an extra 5% off of Sloppy <laughs> Joe at Collier Mother Deli. Make your way down to Call Your Mother Deli in the Petworth Get yourself area. a travel discount. Mention DMAC and First Amendment Sports, and the Call Your Mother call of the night is traveling. Get you a discount on your sandwich or whatever you want to order. It's all good. Madison Scott with a touch. About 11, 10, 10 11 feet out. She's got a soft touch in that mid-range area. She's comfortable there. Another couple feet out. She was looking a little lost in the first half. Jada Walker down low. Deja Bristol gathers. Six-point game. That's what we're used to seeing from Jada Walker. Gia Cook with the move. And really her movement. A little double got that crossover. Yeah. Allen Iverson style. That was that was almost uh, a sham god scenario. <laughs> it was close. It was close. It was a little de little derivation. <laughs> Good call. <laughs> yeah, a little Darren Williams. Cook with the make on the first one. Unable to get the second one to fall. Jada Walker pushing it back. Gia Cook had a, a tough time at it in the first half. She is making a point to assert herself here in the second. 
LZ Moda K tight. McNamara has pissed. Pinnock for three. Back up. Rebound. LZ. Back up to Walker up top. She's driving. She's got position. Pitts. Looked up. Wanted Gia Cook for a second. And she is struggling. Keeping the ball though for the Mustangs. It goes back to Pitts. Little spin off the rim. There's a player down. We hope she's okay. It's Alicia Pinnock on the baseline. We do hope she's okay. Time out on the floor. It doesn't seem to be a leg issue, which is always a good thing. Yeah, there's a lot of activity down there. She's in pain. Oh, maybe so. Maybe so. Now they are going down toward the leg. Just over six minutes to go in the third quarter. And Darren, I don't know what the call was before they blew blew it dead. They are showing a fresh 30. Let's see how she gets on and the And the senior kind of favoring the left side, not putting any weight. And they'll Take every precaution, yes, as they always do when we cover these programs. All these schools and these leagues, they just do a great job of taking care of the kids. That's another thing I always say, Darren, as good as, as these, these programs are, as good as the coaches are, as good as the players are, as all of that has changed over the last 10, 15, 20 years, thank God the, the care, the medical care, the trainers, um, I mean, it's amazing. You should want, you should want your kid. They're the safest place they can be. Sometimes yeah. is between the whistles on these courts and on these fields. They're just taken care of so well uh, by all these staff. So tip our hats to uh, to these two schools uh, and lo our local high school sports scene. They just just do a great job taking care of the kids. We just we hope Pinnock's okay. And as the athlete gets better, so does the medical staff. Yep. They do a great job. See, they got ice on the bringing some already. ice out. You just, in the old days, there's some dirt and some tussing and call it, you know, and then get you back out there. Yeah. What a cold spray. Am I showing my age? Inbound to Cook. Drive. And they are going to call the defensive Deja. It doesn't get the Deja Vu call. But she's got, she's drawn a lot of a lot of them. Going to ring, ring her up for a defensive call here. I tell you Cook what, you line. cannot keep Gia Cook from getting downhill. She gets Good her toes throw. and shoulders toward, going towards that basket. She won't be denied. It's good to see the two medical staffs on both both of the teams kind of taking care of Delisha. Cook makes them both, three point game, six minutes to go in the third quarter. Jada Walker right back to Fontelroy. And this will be a, an interesting thing to see. Pinnock's been a major factor in the backcourt for New Hope in this game. Fontelroy from the corner, drains the three. Six point game, Cook brings it up. Ja, inside. Ja rolled, got underneath the legs of Elsie. I thought they were gonna call a travel. <laughs> it was, but they didn't. Bodies flying <laughs> yeah, everywhere. That's right. Pinnick was really uh, instrumental in helping them 
kind of give Walker a break from having to bring it up. Now it's all going to be on Fauntleroy as Walker drives. Cook and King on her. She gets it inside. There's that travel. Call your mother Delis will be giving them subs away for free by the end of this <laughs> night. Tell Ethan. It's gonna it's gonna it's gonna cost him. Madison Scott calls for the ball, gets it, drives down low. Unable to get the end one, but she does pick up the foul. We'll see who they call it on. It's gonna be either Maria or Elsie on this one. It's going against Gakdang. It's a strong slash to the basket right there. And she wanted it as soon as she came across half court. She was calling for it. She cut right away. And she gets the bounce in for the free throw. She's done a great job at the free throw line tonight. Such a soft touch. Madison Scott's so smart too. She probably saw Bristol taking a breather able to get down low. McNamara cuts the lead to four. Here comes Walker, Gia Cook on her. That's a lot of speed right there. Walker gets inside. Unable to finish, but she does draw the foul. Jada Walker to the line for two. A little ball fake right there going to the basket to create an angle. Draw contact. Like I said, McNamara made it made it a point to work her on both sides of the of the court. Yeah, and that could be the reason some of these free throws are coming up short. Without a doubt, Darren, I was thinking the exact same thing. Shea Hayes back to Gia Cook. Leah two pops out. Madison Scott to King inside to Gio. That's going to be a block by Maria Gakdang. And now New Hope's running. Jada Walker pushing it. She'll bring it back out. Reset. Back inside. Poise. Jada Walker with the drive. And a the bucket. A lot of poise right there. Uh oh, oh shoulder. We have now we have a shoulder like a injury shoulder. that was two arms extended. Gia Cook and Jada Walker were both going for an inbound ball. And you saw it right away. I'll tell you, if we can get the, the replay up here. Look at this, she snake dribble. Back nice inside. spin move, inside hand layup, soft off the glass. And it's a quick inbound and you can see right away her arms are tangled with Gia Cook. It's Gia Cook's making a strong move back for the ball. Is that you always teach us in the basement, Darren? Run to the pass, run through the pass. Absolutely. Don't wait for it to come to you. Unfortunately for uh, Jada Walker, she was in between that on that one. We hope yeah. she's okay. Looks back, like an elbow. Back to and that play shoulder. and that decision that she made on the break. A lot of times, point guards when they're up ahead of the of the break, they don't show patience. And that time she showed patience, kept her dribble alive, let everybody come come back, and then she surveyed the floor and found her angle. Very very nice play. See here, she pulls back. Let's let the play materialize and it finds her spot. Cook out of position there for a second. This is all Jada needs. And depending on how this goes, New Hope is going to be short a couple of their starting guards. Which I, I, I always find these moments, see these programs. There's no one on the end of the bench who couldn't start most <laughs> in most places on teams like these. I know. It's just a new name to call out that we haven't seen in a while. Looks like uh, Tara Cousins is going to join Fauntleroy in the backcourt for New Hope here. Fauntleroy, the sophomore, number two, is going to see her role increase yep. effective immediately. And I expect Coach Oliver to key on her now uh, in order to, to re really make her work hard and get the ball out of her hands. Well, you hate to see injuries, but when you have teams of this caliber and that much depth, it's just the next, next girl up, you know? Yep. And I'm sure somebody over there is capable of doing the job. Maybe not as well, but sufficient. 
I'm just reminded of last year what happened when we were watching Paul the Six boys. But right as the season starts, they lose two five-star guards right away. And then what happens? Our, our, our main man, Doug. And then Doug McDaniel. <laughs> I mean, no one Trevor was looking Keels. to call his name. until, And then all of a sudden, he became one of the best stories in the entire uh, area last year. To the beat of first-team all-conference <laughs> yeah. as a freshman. Like I said, sometimes when, when someone goes down, it's a it's the next person's opportunity. Yep. Even though you do not want to see these injuries. Nope. And don't get me wrong, it's it's you hate to see it. But when you have deep teams and multiple capable players, sometimes you don't miss a beat. Gia Cook to Madison Scott. Setting up inside. Good dish. Gibson nice high, low to action. King. Five point game. Shea Hayes trying to put some pressure on Kennedy Fauntleroy. Tara Cousins. And Taylor Gibson fighting hard for the ball. All the way back up for Gia Cook. And she's fouled. Unable to get the end one. A little bit of life for Ma for McNamara here. Ken, I'll tell you what, with the with the two guards out, New Hope has come in with some forwards and inside players, so don't be surprised if you see McNamara turn the pace up a little bit. Well, that's what we just saw. I couldn't turn my head fast enough to see Gia Cook get up the floor. She's as fast as they come. I believe this will be our first look at Kennedy Davis checking in for Flo Venerte. Cook makes the second. It's a four point game with four minutes to go in the third quarter. Falteroy handling the responsibilities at the point. And Kennedy Davis gets the rebound. And we're going to get a tie up. She's not shy. Take advantage of the, the opportunity. Arrow right now is pointing to McNamara. Don't be surprised if you see Hope Evans check in yep. very soon to put some pressure on Fauntleroy, who seems to be the only ball handler out there. Cook to King, who finds herself open for a decisive jumper. Two-point game. Shea Hayes, Dean up Fauntleroy. Inside to Maria. Unable to make it fall. Leah 2 King. Wanted Madison Scott for a second. And then misconnects with Gia Cook. And you see uh, Leah 2 and Madison talking. When they turn defense to offense there, Leah 2 wanted to push. Coach Oliver saying, it's okay, just get my ball back. And There's Gia cue. Cook. Look like a good block from Gagdang, but they're going to draw the call. When you play that type of defense and that type of pace, at that type of pace, yep. sometimes you, those turnovers you can live with because you can count on your girls to get your ball back. Knocks down the first. I think we're seeing our first signs of chippiness too, which if we're being honest, when you get programs like these that we've been covering all night long, and especially the fami familiarity, it's like playing against your brother and sister. McNamara's on a 6-0 run since the injury to. Tie game, 39 up, three minutes to go in the third quarter. Shea Hayes on Fauntleroy. High, high screen, Maria. Tara Cousins might have, might have gotten away with one there. Leah Two King with the rebound. Pushing it up. Fontaroy steps in front of a pass. Man for Taylor Gibson. Three on two. Tigers. Madison Scott got Leah Two King on the run. What a pass. 
and a finish by King. McNamara takes the lead. Two minutes, 20 seconds to go in the third quarter. All the momentum going the maroon and gold way. One thing you want to do against this McNamara team is take care of the basketball. And I'll tell you what, Shea Hayes stood in between a pair of picks and kind of like, the, like two picks canceled, canceled themselves out. The pass went to no one. Because they will speed you up and try to force you into turnovers. You're playing right into their hands when you do that. Taylor Gibson to Madison Scott, the McDonald's All-American candidate with the ball. To the outside of Taylor Gibson, back to Madison Scott from the free throw line. That mid-range can. And again, Gia Cook causing disruption. And that's going to be a foul on Taylor Gibson, who's trying to get herself up. She got into the legs of Maria Gakdang. Be a loose ball foul on the Mustangs. If you're Coach Oliver, you can live with that. That's right. What, Elena a, what a turn of in. events. Yeah, four-point lead now. 10-0 run for the Mustangs. Yes. Tara Cousins looking to calm things down for the Tigers. Lasik with the pick. Stop this run. And Ann Porter. Call your mother. Got to get Daily in on the action. Call. You haven't been in this game unless you, I mean, you know what? I, I, when are they going to call one on you? Or me for that <laughs> matter. And Luke David, he's been traveling all night long. Handoff exchange to get Maddie Scott going downhill to her strong side. It's this a good play. Game is slowed down, Darren. A lot of free throws. And McNamara's in the bonus. Yep. Oh, Madison Scott gets the shooter's touch at Im the line. Impressive, very impressive from the free throw line. She makes them both. The run continues. Speaking of run, Kennedy Fountainroy, coast to coast, unable to get it to fall. Seems to be a lid on the basket now for New Hope. Gia Cook, screen for Madison Scott, dish to Leah Two King. She'll draw the foul from Fountainroy. Gia Cook, what a dish. King at the line for two, trying to extend this Mustang lead and run. You see the jubilation on Maddie Scott's face when Leah Two got the foul call. She's a ball of energy. Yes. She seems to be a great teammate, just like Angel Reese. And they were teammates in the summer, the takeover. King drains them both. The run continues, 47-39, Mustangs. New Hope running, Cousins out ahead, three on two. Elsie in the corner, moves to her right. Misses the jumper. Gia Cook on the move, running back. Kennedy Davis d her up. Taylor Gibson inside. She'll draw the foul from Tara Cousins. She's got great hands inside. It's just evident and obvious. It's a great place to try to be dumping that ball inside. I feel she's like that receiver that when you the quarterback throws, you're just confident she's going to make the catch. She does. She has. A, she does a great job of sealing her defender and giving the ball handler a really good target. And the and Mustangs she's got soft hands and doing a great job from the line as of late. Forty-three seconds to go in the third quarter. Taylor Gibson misses the second. Nine point lead for the Mustangs.
Fauntleroy driving, kicks to Elsey. Taylor Gibson steps in front. New Hope keeps it. Fauntleroy with the drive. Nice looking kiss. That was a run stopper the glass. right there. Yeah, it was. But Inside of Taylor Gibson. What a play. Once they got it across the court, I don't think the ball hit the court again. Incredible pass by Maddie Scott right there. Threaded the needle. Madison Scott with the denial of the three-point attempt from Laura Porter. That's the third quarter. And it was quite a th third quarter. If you uh, are wearing maroon and gold, as the Mustangs went on a heck of a run. A couple Ref of the referee told her to calm down a bit. She came over to the ref and said, that's my energy right there. You got to let me do my thing. And here we I'm are. I'm not taunting. I'm just energetic. The Call Your Mother Deli third quarter highlights. Madison Scott found her touch in the third quarter. And I tell you, where would they be without their sophomore Fauntleroy at this point in time? They need her Kenny more than Fauntleroy ever now. Fauntleroy is impressive. There's Jada Walker. Just before she injured what we think was her elbow or shoulder on this inbound, the inbound that followed that play. And then McNamara, from that point on, in the third quarter, it was all Mustangs. All Mustangs. Great patience on that baseline jumper by Leah, too. Madison Scott with a nice touch pass. Really, what they did wrong in the first quarter, they did right in the third quarter with their, their passes up the floor. How many times have we seen the ball not hit the floor and McNamara taking it the length of the court for easy stick in. Oh. That's a sign of good coaching. A well, a well coached team. And by virtue of the deferral at the opening jump, New Hope will inbound. Coaches will tell you all the time. The 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 pass is much faster and much more efficient than the dribble. So if you can get the ball down the court without putting it on the floor, that's picture perfect. Deja Bristol inside, lead to King. Tara Cousins. That ball was affected by Gia Cook. Porter finds Fauntleroy to reset. 25 on the shot for New Hope. Tara Cousins for three. Great shot. That was Just a what nice the Tigers needed. Shot. And she's pumped up. Six point game. Shea Hayes for three. Madison Scott with a big rebound. Right back up. Short. Leah two. King fighting underneath. That's going to be a tie up. Possession arrow for McNamara. Let's see if they can get a inbound play here. Madison Scott. To Gia Cook. Madison Scott up top. They're trying to figure Looking out how to pick. attack this zone. And get Taylor Gibson for shot. three. It's a good looking shot, unable to fall. Tara Cousins back the other way. Cousins seems determined. Cousins feeds down low to Maria. Madison Scott bringing it back the other way. In the corner for Shea Hayes for three. Leah to King. I believe they're going to get her over the back on that rebound. I tell you, Tara Cousins has stepped it up in this fourth quarter. She is not going out without a fight. Six and a half to go in the game. Six point lead for the Mustangs. Keeping New Hope in this game. Tara Cousins. Running point for the Tigers. And they're going to get that. 
off the foot of Aaliyah Pitts. It'll stay New Hope ball. Nice inbound play. Laura Porter with the drive, draws the foul, she'll go to the line. I'll tell you, Ken, I'm impressed by both teams and the, the inbound plays that they're running. Unable to get the first one to fall. This is coaching at the highest level. Second one falls, five point lead for the Mustangs. Closing the gap, Hope, Hope Evans. Is. Shea Hayes drives baseline. She'll draw the foul. I believe they'll get Kennedy Davis on this one. She was in position, as long if she didn't swing her arm down. Would Might no not foul. have been a call. Yeah. Little bit of a momentum swing. Kennedy for Kennedy. Substitution there. Ball to Roy in. Davis out. Shea gets the second one to fall. McNamara's lead back up to six. And now Shea's gonna go over the back, Tara Cousins. If you're McNamara, you do not wanna do that. Yeah, you don't wanna get him one step closer to one and ones. Maybe another clock issue. Tara Cousins on the drive, gets to the baseline, too far in. They're gonna get Leah Two King on the foul. I believe that'll send Deja Bristol to the line. Cousins is aggressive. She made that play happen by her aggressive play getting downhill trying to get to that basket. Gave Deja Bristol a chance for an offensive putback. Now she steps to the line. Looks like maybe they're Spelling Kennedy Fauntleroy on defense. The future Cavalier, she's headed down to Wahoo land in Charlottesville. Madison Scott able to put the, bring the rebound home. Gia Cook pushing it. Taylor Gibson unable to bring it. The first pass she was unable to handle all night long. It was a tough one. Tara Cousins, she'll get called for the offensive. She extended that arm there. Easy looks call like, for the refs. Looks like Gia Cook was baiting her into that yeah. the whole way down the floor. They're gonna call that back. Taylor Gibson unable to establish herself on the right side of the line. Five point game, five and a half minutes to go. New Hope ball. I don't know if there's any momentum at this point in time, Darren. McNamara kind of lost that lost it there at the end of the beginning of the fourth. And Tara Cousins with a three pointer. Deja Bristol. Madison Scott with a rebound of Deja's miss. A little out of control there. Darren, you want to take a guess on what that call was? It was not a travel. Not I a travel. think they called an offensive foul right there with Maddie Scott using her off arm. I don't think so because it would, it would, I think they'd be a one and once if it was an, if it was a foul. I think they called a carry or some kind of a double dribble. Uh, player control fouls aren't called. Aren't 
okay. aren't shooting fouls. But I'll tell you what, our keys to the second half, when we had uh, Coach Ron James over here, we all agreed the team that takes care of the basketball is going to most likely come out on top. Yeah, on the inside. And it seems like neither team is able to keep the turnovers down. Referees getting their money's worth. Cousins makes the first side, draws the Tigers within four. One more from the striper here now. Gibson corrals it. Gia Cook controls it. Working against Kennedy Davis. Good dish. Taylor Gibson unable to make it fall. Ja, the freshman front three. You know, no, no good. Ball on the floor. Tara Cousins up with it. And it's a two-point ball Porter game. Porter brings the Tigers within two. Another over and back call. An over and back call. It seems that part of McNamara's transition game is hitting the ball back to the trailer. So the trailer's got to hurry up and get across half because she knows the ball is coming that way especially because New Hope is trapping over here in the corners. Cousins penetrates, soft touch. Ja with the rebound, McNamara pushing up, up by two points. Gia Cook calls for it and gets it. Stops at the free throw line, soft shot. And I so believe they're gonna get- Another over the back on Leah too. She's so aggressive to that ball. She's gotten called for that two or three times tonight. Lord Porter. Now both teams are in the double bonus. Be shooting two for the rest of the night. Now you're talking about a long four minutes. <laughs> Which team's gonna be able to make their free throws? That's what's gonna decide at this point in time. All tied High up. game, she makes them both. Four minutes to go in this, in this gym. Gia Cook working for McNamara. Shea Hayes. And they're going to call Porter playing from behind the man. Madison Scott sets up at the free throw line. If I'm McNamara, I try to get the ball in Maddie Scott's hands down the stretch. Good stroke. We're going to see Yonta Vaughn. Haven't seen her in a while. Shea Hayes steps off for the Mustangs. Violation. They wave off the shot, and there will be no do-over, Darren. That seems ball. to be the only way you can keep Maddie from hitting free throws is a violation, because she's been perfect thus far. Mustangs by one. Cousins bringing it up for the Tigers. We got ourselves, got ourselves a, a ball good game. time finish on the way. They're gonna get a kickball on that one. And the Tigers just keep fighting. Missing two of their better players on the bench. Injuries in the third quarter for both of them. Delisha Pinnock and Jada Walker. And they continue to fight and execute. Referees holding up, they'll get this right. Tara Cousins. 
Finds Falteroy in the corner. She steps to her right. And there it is. Call your mother, Deli officially owes you money if you order <laughs> the special. Call of the night. Every sandwich you order, you also get $5. Madison Scott inbounds to Taylor Gibson. Madison Scott back on top. Driving on Kennedy Davis. She finds Gia Cook on the right side. 20 seconds to go on the shot clock. Coming up on three minutes to go in the game. Mustangs by one. Gia Cook in the middle. Matt Scott with a dish. Madison Scott with a finish. Mustangs up by three. Nice drive and dish by Gia Cook. Tara Cousins and Gia Cook. In Giving each other battle. a good run, yeah. Tara stepped back. Another push off. It's got to be frustrating with Gia Cook guarding you full court. <laughs> <laughs> kind of the same way Hope Evans does. I'll tell you, she is fast on both ends of the court. She's got to be in great shape. Taylor Gibson sits down. Leah Two King back in. Yanta Vaughn. Teed up by Fonteroy. Yanta all the way down. Floater in. Not going to go. Tough decision right the there. Quick shot, quick possession. Just on the end of the game. Inside to Deja Bristol. Nice dish by Fonteroy, the sophomore. Found Fonteroy her teammate. Fonteroy showing a lot of poise. Yep. And they Handling that ball. Only a sophomore. Kennedy Davis with the steal. Unable to get the conversion. Gia Cook back the other way. She fakes a look at Madison Scott and then gets the roll. So we talked about with Ron James. What a Both turn teams of get the ball right all the way to the basket. One team gets two. The other team le is left wanting. Deja Bristol not paying attention. Miscommunication. Madison Scott pushing. That ball's off of a foot. They're going to call it off of Madison Scott's foot. They've got to get this call right. Yes, it that was off of New Hope. It was. I thought it was off of Deja Bristol's foot. They've got it right. Well, right now they got the ball inbounded with uh, Maria Gakdang underneath to inbound. The initial call under the basket was for New Hope. I believe you and I saw that ball come off of Deja Bristol's foot. The referees, I think, are going to get this call right. No, no, they are not. Or, well. And that's a timeout for the Mustangs. It's difficult. Don't have the power of uh, challenging here. And you know what? Where's the red flag? Where's Ken? the red flag at? <laughs> Or the maroon flag in this case. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice pass over the top. Deja Bristol, she had her defender sealed. One minute, 47 seconds to go. The McNamara Mustangs up by three. Both teams in the double bonus. If you're, if you're New Hope here, I would, I would do a... A lot more of the same. Work the ball around the outside, spread the floor, and see if you can get Deja Bristol with, with a post up in there. It's a high percentage shot. Then you've got Maria rebounding on the weak side. Maria inbound. Tara Cousins. Looks like Deja's setting up shop down there on the block where she wants it. Here it comes. High low. Elite, Aaliyah Pitts with a steal and a great bounce pass in between. Looking for Hope Evans. Tara Cousins unable to bring it in. 
She had the steal. It was a good look, but just not enough juice. Speaking of juice, where is he tonight? Juice is watching. All right. Hey, Juice, we love you. That's one. That's some juice that's always worth a squeeze. Just finished hard day's work at the St. James. Taylor Gibson down low. He's watching us live on the broadcast. First Amendment Sports on YouTube Live. Great defense from Maria Gakdang. And she wants it on the other side. Fonteroy. Unable to get it to her, but she gets a rebound anyways. Deja Bristol pulls it down. It's going to be a tie-up. I believe that arrow belongs to New Hope at the moment. The initial call was a tie, tie-up. New Hope is arguing it was a tie-up between two, two Tigers. Gonna be New Hope balls. Gia Cook checks in for Hope Evans. Fontroy chases down the inbounds pass, picks it up at half court. Gia Cook playing tough D. And you know what? Good defensive job right there. And the there ball goes off of Deja Bristol's foot. Yes, it did. And they call that. Makeup call. Makeup foot call. <laughs> that's your foot long, that's your call your mother foot long <laughs> call of the night. Gia Cook for the Mustangs. We're under a minute to play. Mustangs up by three. King looking to control the clock. 18 on the shot. Ball back in Leah to King's hands. Down and out to Taylor Gibson. Fancy footwork. Still hasn't touched the rim. Strong play by Taylor Gibson under the basket. She picks up a foul. Three very good chances for the Mustangs there. And they're rewarded with a trip to the line. Seems like Coach Oliver said we will not shoot a jump shot on that possession. Let's pound it inside. Three-point game, 37 seconds to go. Support, One shot for Gibson coming. free throw right here, Ken. Oh, yeah. Turns it into a two-possession game if she can convert it. And she gets it. Four-point game, 37 seconds to go. Marie Gactang to inbound. Tara Cousins, unable, wow, unable to get it. And Madison Scott. Is calling, they're calling for the trainer. She went diving over the chairs. We hope she's okay. That was a sacrificial play by the McDonald's All-American candidate. Full denial on that full court press by McNamara. Yeah, and they've been going underneath the pass. Tara Cousins has been able to run the baseline, and they've been able to get the pass out in front of her. That time, Madison Scott cut underneath it. A little bit of back and forth between the two of them, and she, I mean, she went full Superman dive right through the corner. I think the good news was there's a break in the chairs there. I think she's going to be okay. I think she just hit the floor hard, thankfully. From the sound of the applause. As opposed to hitting, like you know, the bleachers, yeah. She's, she's coming down gin gingerly, yeah. and that's a and that's a right out. Both teams now are uh, short, big time players. That's that ankle. Remember last last year? Yeah, it bothered her all her season long. A, when we had her on First Amendment Sports on the broadcast, she turned her ankle against St. John's. Yep. Who's going to step up for the Mustangs? Take the place of Madison Scott Fontaroy for three. To tie the game, I'm sorry, to bring them within one. The rebound was to Maria Gakdang. And they will get her four. The call your mother call of the night. You can feed your whole family. Mention me and mention First Amendment Sports. I'm telling you, they are going to hook you up. Timeout called, I, I can assure you that Coach Caldwell is going to apply 
apply some heavy pressure. 24 and a half seconds to go in this game as they tend to Madison Scott's ankle at the end of McNamara bench. It's I would assume at this point. Now, Ken. We've seen uh, the last her this game as she limps back to the team huddle. This was not a made basket on this change of possession, so they cannot run the baseline. But one thing that they need to do that New Hope is not doing a good job of doing against their pressure is play in space. You don't want to allow the pressing team to shrink the court and push you towards the baseline. That's how Maddie Scott almost got that steal on the other end. Yep. You want to play in space and come and meet the ball. I'd line up at the three-point line. Most teams like to line up in tandem at the elbows or the free throw line. I'd play even more space. Makes it difficult. LZ with the interception. Leah Tu King with the rebound. And they're going to foul King before she can get rid of the ball to Shea Hayes. You see how all that action happened below, down by the block? Yep. That's what good pressing teams do. They try to shrink the court on you. Stop it to play. They, they get, got the steal they subs. wanted. They just didn't convert that. Yep. Elzy, Moda K tight. Just forcing it just a little bit there. Been a lot of missed chippies down the stretch. Mm hmm. Easy opportunities. Leah Tu King with some big free throw attempts for the Mustangs. Unable to get the first one. Stays a four point game. Both teams will be busy at film session watching some of these opportunities that they let go that could make a difference in this game. Leah Tu gets a rebound. She's going to be fouled by Elzamota K tight. Wow, what a hustle play. 18.3 to go, and she's right back to the line with a chance to redeem her. Her last trip to the stripe. Leah Tu King never gives up on the play. Nope. Never. And she extends the Mustang lead to five with 18 seconds to go in this game. Doesn't make the second. Elsie with the rebound. Fonteroy pushing it for the Tigers. Kicking it out for a three. King with the rebound. Shea Hayes pushing it to That'll Pitts. It. Two seconds it. to go in this game. And your final from the Family Life Center in the Super Games. Bishop McNamara 58, New Hope Academy 53. We just might see these guys play each other again before it's all said and done. We're, sir, we're proud to be here though, though for this one, though, I'd say. What a way to kick off the high school season that we have here on First Amendment Sports. An exciting doubleheader, action-packed both games, and the best of the best talent that we have here in the DMV. So I'm excited about what we got come, coming forward in this basketball season. We want to say the boys and girls side. Thank you again to our very, very good friends at Call Your Mother. The Deli Out In. In the Petworth area on Georgia Avenue, down by Howard University. Go check them out as they bring us highlights from the fourth quarter. The New Hope made a play to get back in this game, and they were back in this game. We had a three or four point contest here after McNamara had gone on a run. Deja Bristol just played so smart down low all night long, drawing fouls, drawing charges. Uh, getting good rebounds, uh, really beating beating girls to the, to the spot. Yeah, she's on her way to Charlottesville, and I see why. You know, the Cavaliers are, are getting a very solid post player in Deja Bristol. As they start to clear out. Uh, they start to clear out. I want to say thank you to our good friends at Automatic Sports, helping us out in production as they always do. Such a great job. Vic Maddox, Luke David, our main man, Allen, uh, sitting on, at center court here with us. He's nice. Darren McClinton. Hey, it was a great event, beautiful facility. I enjoyed calling these two games, and it, they didn't disappoint. You know, it was two great games, action-packed, great crowd, great atmosphere. We'll be, what a way to kick it off. We'll be back 
on Tuesday night from the basement for our normal programming. And we'll also be giving you updates on the next time you can catch us in the gym. Until then, on behalf of First Amendment Sports, I'm Ken Marangolo. Have a great, great holiday season, everybody. We'll see you soon. Thank you. Appreciate you.